This is example number two. In this example, we are given another triangle. This time, it's quite obvious just by looking at it that it's not a right angle triangle. Uh, we are told two of the angles. This one is 42 degrees. And this one is 20 degrees. Remembering that means that we could, if necessary, work out the third angle. We're told the length of one of the sides is 25 metres and the triangle is labelled PQR. The question asks us to work out the length of line PR. So that's the length of this line along here. The first thing that we're going to do, uh, as with any of these questions, is draw the diagram. So once we've drawn the diagram, what we want to do next is label it. Now we're going to strip off the letters PQR and we're going to label it using the more familiar letters A, B and C. So it's exactly the same diagram. We've highlighted the line that we want to find, this pink dotted line. And now we're going to relabel the sides and angles. So we'll call this one A, this one B, and this angle C. Remembering to use capitals for the angles. The sides are labelled opposite the angles. So this is angle C, so the opposite side is side C. This is angle A, so the opposite side is called side A. And this is angle B, so this one is side B. Draw the diagram, label the diagram, then write down our new rule. The new rule is the sine rule. So we have our sine rule. And the next thing we want to do is put a question mark at the thing we're trying to work out and tick the things that we already know. Okay, so we're trying to find this side, which is side A. So we'll put a wee question mark at that. We know angle C, so we can tick this down here. We know angle B, so we tick this one. We know the length of side C, so we can tick this one. We don't know the length of side B, and we don't know angle A, so we can't tick those. Now this time, what we have is we have a few things filled in, but it doesn't look like we have enough information to use the sine rule. But if we think back, we said that if we know two of the angles, that means we can then work out the third angle. This one's 42, this one's 20, which gives us 62. That means the remaining angle is 118 degrees. So we now know angle A also, which means we can give it a tick. So what we're looking for are the two fractions which have the four things filled in. So that would be this first one and this time the last one. So now we have the two fractions that we're going to use and it's a case of substituting in the things we know. So side A is the one we're trying to find so we can still call that A for the moment. Angle A was 118 degrees, so that's sine 118 degrees. That's equal to side C, which is 25, divided by sine C, and we know angle C is 42, so that's sine 42. So we need to remember that what we're looking to find is side A. So that means we're looking to find this one. That means we want A on its own on the left hand side. Sine 118 is on the bottom of the fraction. That means A is being divided by sine 118. If we move sine 118 onto the other side of the equal sign, it will change from divide to multiply. So we have 25 
times sine 118. And we know that that is still being divided by sine 45. So we're ready to use our calculator to work out our answer. Now remember, it's the all of the top line divided by the bottom line. So if keying it in all at once on the calculator, it may be helpful to put in brackets to remind us. So doing the calculation on our calculator, um, we find out that side A is equal to 31 point two the units this time are meters so it's thirty one point two meters and this answer is correct to one decimal place we have rounded off at one decimal place so the length of the dotted line is thirty one point two meters our final answer Remember what we should do when we get our final answer is look at it and look at the diagram. Does that seem a reasonable answer for this angle? Well this side was 25, the dotted line looks like a longer side, so 31.2 does seem a reasonable answer.